I welcome you to Central Moments again today as we are walking through the most famous sermon ever preached, and that's the Sermon on the Mount delivered by Jesus. And we come to the midway point, I just passed maybe the midway point of the Sermon on the Mount, and in chapter 6, Jesus talks about three very foundational uh, activities of a person who would claim to belong to the kingdom of God. It's, the give, it's giving, the giving of alms, and then praying and fasting. And he deals with those in that order in Matthew chapter 6 at the heart of the Sermon on the Mount. And today we'd like to especially just, just drill down into our prayer lives where Jesus talks about prayer. And first, of, first of all, he, hits, he goes for our motivations. He says in verse 5, And when you pray, uh, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners. Why? to be seen by others. That's why they love to pray. Not because they're in fellowship with their Heavenly Father, but because this is an image thing. This is a show thing. This is an ego thing. This is, this is I want to be seen by others. I want to do spiritual performance in public places so that people will, will admire me back. And Jesus said, truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. People's admiration is all the rewards you're going to get. But, verse 6 says, when you pray, go into your room and close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. And your Father, then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Because when you do it in secret, you're not doing it just to look impressive to other people and have your ego stroked. You're doing it because you truly are hungry for God and there's something authentic happening inside of you. He says, so when you pray, go into your room. Some old English translations are go into your closet. I have known people who literally go into a closet to pray. And the idea here, of course, is Jesus says, saying, as opposed to doing it publicly on street corners so that people can admire you, you, you do it where people can't see you. And there's something about there's something about the secret place with God that both hides us and humbles us. There's something about the secret place that, that, that shapes true authenticity with Jesus. You're not praying ultimately for your own self-interest. You're praying because you are hungry for God and there's something authentic. You just need Him and you want to be in fellowship with Him. That's the value of secret prayer. It, it keeps our motives clean it reinforces and shapes authenticity in us. And then Jesus said, if you do, that your Heavenly Father will see what's done in secret and He'll reward you in the open. I do believe that secret prayer, uh, prayer alone, although I, I love praying with others, that needs to be a part of our lives too, but prayer alone um, is, one, is one of the keys to the public anointing then, that is then on our lives. He said, your Father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. So secret prayer is very, very powerful. And then he teaches them how to pray. How, how do we pray? And he takes a number of rabbinic prayers and kind of summarizes them down to say, here's what people who are part of my kingdom, here are the things they prioritize when they do pray in secret. First of all, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We start with God's glory and honor of him. Not our honor, not, not I'm doing this because I want to make a public show and have people kind of glorify me or respect me or admire me. No, we start with admiring God, our Father who is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. And then it's from God's glory to then his will. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a way of praying. L Lord, uh, you know, I'm not trying to impress people. All I do, all I want is to actually live out your will in my life. And then, and then comes, after we pray God's concerns, then, then, then we're free to, to share with him our needs and pray our concerns. So, Lord, give us this day. Give us today our daily bread. It's good to trust. Lord Jesus, for everything I have today, I want to live directly from your hand today. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those, uh, um, as we also have forgiven our own debtors. This forgiveness unclogs the spiritual channel between us and God when we forgive others, just as Jesus has forgiven us. 
and lead us not into temptation, because we are in a battle. We're going to face temptation, but don't lead us the ways of temptation so that, so that the evil one can dominate us, but instead deliver us from the evil one. What powerful things to pray. What a powerful combination to go into the secret place and then to pray this way. Our Father, we pray you'll help each one of us with our prayer lives, wherever we are. I, I pray, God, that we'll just not be praying when we're in church or in our small groups. May our only prayer lives not be just when we're around other people. And forgive us if we ever pray only to impress other people. But my God, I pray that you will nurture that secret place in prayer where we just encounter you and we glorify you and we submit to your will and we make our needs known and we find strength in the battle against temptation and, and we find hearts to truly be able to love each other. Thank you for this prayer. Thank you for this process. Thank you for this pattern you laid out in the Sermon on the Mount. And we, we just ask you will help us to live it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.